On this episode, we talk about, is it better to be alive or dead? Hi, welcome to TGR Monday. Guys, I'm just getting ready to go off on holiday and we are going for the third time in a row now to one of these Christian holiday companies where, oh. where there are meetings, not that we'll go to any of those particularly, but, <laughs> but it's something that would have brought us out in hives in previous years. Um, but not everybody, they're popular. So who else does this sort of stuff and, or do you also come out in hives at the idea? Well, I, I got into trouble because visiting the Holy Land, I kept saying, we're going on holiday to the Holy Land. And Julia, being a proper vicar, would you know, elbow me and say, it's a pilgrimage. It's a pilgrimage. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Land is not a Christian theme park. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> She's, right, She's right, yeah. yeah. Like, we go on pilgrimage to Walsingham. Uh, we've been there a couple of times. We went last year for a few days. It's, it's, it's really nice to go somewhere which is a sacred place, you know, where you know millions of people have been before and it's got a great history that goes back oh. and you feel as though as you're there you're stepping in the shoes of all those other people who've been before and i suppose for us walsingham is, is a great place because you know you've got the roman catholic shrine and you've got the anglican shrine and, oh. and we can do stuff uh together as a family which is and it's not like work well yeah so it's not anonymous. it's more mini break than than, than uh, retreat yeah, and, it, and it's a pilgrimage. It's not like kind of doing it as a, as a retreat sort of thing. The thing is, oh, when you go to Walsingham, half, half from no me because they've got the kind of father radar, so it's kind of like... Yeah, you know, they spot like, you coming. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter if I wear an Iron Maiden T-shirt, they still know I'm a vicar there. Oh, so that's it's kind of like, you know, it's just like, Ooh, that's a slightly weird And they always TGI Monday as well. Obviously. Oh, oh in Walsingham. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, Dan, you? do you do those holidays? Or I, I, how I, do you I, feel about those Well, things? no, I, I, I haven't recently, although for the same reasons as you, I think they're great for the kids, so we've been talking about doing it, but I have been on them quite a few times in the past like spring harvest and new wine and what i find fascinating about them is that because you're away god often does special things during those periods because it's a safe time away from where you normally are at mm. and there's lots of christians around mm. you and there's lots of ministry opportunities around you and so yeah things things happen that yeah, are, I that once. when you go away the ideas come home no, oh, that's a good thought. Because people, to people who don't do what we do, um, will often talk to us about how difficult it is to be to be investing in their spiritual lives, spending time with God, because work just fills all the space available, etc. So I can I understand why people want to do that stuff. I mean, what about well, you? Well, I I always felt uh, even before I went like on various different Christian Christian uh, away days, shenanigans, well, pilgrimages, silent weeks, like at Tazer. exactly. Yeah. Mm. Um, but. Spending the night away, actually, you get a chance to reflect on your life a bit more than you do in everyday life. So I think it's a natural thing that when you are away from your surroundings that you understand them perhaps a little better or look at them differently. Yeah. But I absolutely love both the sort of pilgrimage type thing and the festival type oh, vibe. So um, I always saw Spring Harvest as a bit like a, a little festival, really, in that you're there with your mates, mm. you're able to uh, go and have a good worship up, um, you know, uh, singing in, in the mosh pit. In the mosh pit, singing your lungs out. You know, it's great. Rent collected That's, right down the front. I'm a soul survivor, actually. Bit, yeah. Absolutely, it's brilliant. And uh, a new wine, too. And Green belt for me. Just, oh, just, and saying, I love just saying. I, I, I just can't get enough of them. I just think they're amazing. Lots of opportunities for people to come together and enjoy their faith. And, you know, on yeah. a Sunday, actually, what what is... What is the main theme? The main theme is worshipping God, saying that he is worthy of all our praise. But being a community sometimes can get a little pushed out, I think. Mm. No, no, it's true. Well, it, it does become a controversial consume. alert. Well, no, no, I think the thing is with it, it can become a kind of uh, consumption thing, isn't it? So mm. rather than like, like I'll go to, um, you know, Glastonbury or something like that, uh, to consume the event. And I think we have to always have to be careful, like you can go to Walsingham to consume... Walsingham, you can go there to consume spring harvest. And I think mm. there's something we are default set in today mm. is to consume an experience. And relationships, be that with God or anybody else, aren't about consuming the experience. Are they? But they are, they are. There's a difference, isn't there, between mm. some of those. Some of them are more like a heavy duty, wet weather conference, mm. uh, especially the spring harvest and new wines mm. and the Keswicks and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I, I find they're a bit, a bit less holiday. So if you're actually trying to get away and relax... Only if you go to the stuff. If you go to all the stuff. Yeah, if you go to all the stuff, OK. Maybe that's a mistake. But yeah. there, there's a difference between... Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's that, um, the Spring Harvest one in France we've been to. It is a lot more relaxing. 
<laughs> than the yeah. Easter conferences, which are they're intense. pretty full on. Pretty, they're like timetable yeah, conferences. They can, also, they can also raise expectations a little bit as well. So you can go to these things and they're very electric and they're very exciting, and then you go back to your home church and you feel a bit flat afterwards. That's true. And I think you have to be careful that that actually the conference is the conference and your church is your church. Yeah, and your church and that's is well, you know the your family, and that's what nourishes you. That, that I totally it's... agree. But interestingly, um, I sort of think that actually when you're away, when you've deliberately gone away on a Christian holiday mm. with your mates, you have permission to be 24 hours a day, like full on admitting your faith. Mm. You know, and actually that can really enliven you. That can really create a community in a way that it hasn't been created. But well, you get that you. Though, with, uh, when I went to um, Iron Maiden a few weeks ago, right, in, in May, and some bloke came up to me in Liverpool and said, why has everyone got Iron Maiden t-shirts on? I said, because Iron Maiden are playing. Mm. Oh, and I was in SeaTech in York the other week, somebody had an Iron Maiden t-shirt on. I was like, oh yeah, you're an Iron Maiden fan. He's like, yeah. And you have that connection of the community. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's the same thing. It doesn't matter what you do. And that's important because it binds you in and gives you that sense of identity. Mm. Absolutely. You know? And I think it's wonderful to be able to experience that. I do too. And you get to experience different sorts of worship with each other and learn from each other. Anyway, we could just end up talking about this the whole time. But I, um, we're going to be talking about travel of, of a different sort. Um, we've had a really good question in from... Joe, who um, asked this in a house group. She's been using TGR Monday as a house group resource, and that's going really well, so I encourage anybody mm -hmm. to, to, to do that a bit more. Uh, and Joe asks, why pray for fellow Christians to get better if they would be better off in heaven? That's a big Ooh, one, isn't it? And it's a brilliant thing. question. Thank you, Joe. We'll give it a go. <clears throat> Who wants to kick us off with why pray to get better because you're better off in heaven? Well, I've seen, I've actually seen people by a loved one's deathbed praying the prayer, Lord, take them now. You know, put I them mean. out of their misery, out of their suffering. Uh, they've had their crack at life. You know, just take them on their way. Mm -hmm. And this ties in a little bit with the episode we did on last rites. Mm -hmm. You know, that might be kind of seen as an informal last rites, yeah. but it's a really good question because it, it, it could branch out so many different things like what if uh, parents were trying for a child and then late in life they have a child but it's extremely severely disabled mm -hmm. would you be thinking well if their quality of life appears to you to be rubbish would you be praying Mm. for a, an early death it sounds mm. like sacrilege almost you know well and it's a question that i think we're likely to get asked on the show because uh, actually that is a that is a real sort of fundamental thing about <clears throat> what's what life is for what life is about and and what quality means but that that issue with um wanting people and praying with people okay god just to take them with you is some, certainly some part of my experience as well and that yeah. feels the compassionate thing to do and, and I, <coughs> I, See, I don't think that we are better off in heaven. I'm, I think I'm, you know, <laughs> wow. might sound selfish, but you know, I think I'm better off with my family now. Yeah. So I'm not wishing them all away. I'm better off with my friends now. I'm not wishing you all away in some kind of divine rapture. No, right we're always wishing you away. I'm just behind. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's coming, brother. Oh, it's coming. Oh, oh. I just. But, but the point is, is that, you know, yeah, the, 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 recre the, the heavens and the earth are going to be recreated and that's going to be wonderful and it's going to be kind of a history is going to come to fruition but actually the, the now is the progress to that mm. and the now isn't bad mm. the not yet might be amazing but the now is really important too well, sometimes oh. now is really bad so oh, i was going to say as st paul said you know uh, to live is christ and to die is gain mm. you know we're, we're both in both places um hopefully experiencing the fullness of life because that's what jesus came to give us and he wanted us to experience that but what does that mean at different stages of people's mm. lives and actually it is very difficult but i would say to this um, is it better um to pray for them to get better or to pay, pray for them to go to heaven well surely we should be praying for god's will to be done mm. because actually you know it might that be reminds god's me will. of a prayer <laughs> because we might be praying for what, what God wants us to pray for, you know, in asking for them to get better mm. or for us to know the power that he has over life and death. But the other thing we have to remember, though, is one of the great lies in our society is suffering is meaningless. Mm. Mm. And I think that what we have to remember, if I think about this, I think about last summer when I bust my arms, right, yeah, 
is you wouldn't pray for me to be in heaven because I broke my arm. <laughs> we, we were. Well, I know, I, I, you know. No, but I think no, the thing no. is with it is that it depends on where the person is in their life. Mm. That's the first thing. Yeah. But the other thing is as well is that if you have a, an experience of, of suffering, what happens is you become more in touch with your own sense of vulnerability. Mm. And the strange thing is you have, sometimes this is my experience with it, is that you have a sense of deeper joy because you are reliant on those mm. whom you love and that exposes and brings into light the care and love of those around you and of God mm. and some joy and deep wonder can come out of something which is really quite horrible actually and I think that's something illness, we need to and, and that's something we've all experienced if, if I've, you've just reminded me if I, I'm a terrible patient so Nurses if I've got are. if I've got flu, <clears throat> it's proper full-on man flu. Oh yeah, and that really boosts my prayer life because I'm praying, yeah. mm. you know, every conscious moment. Dear God, please make me better soon. Please God, you know. Yeah. So I'm. Whereas other times, I'll you know might let the prayers. It definitely sharpen. I think Dan, you said on another time. Um, uh, God's office is at the end of our rope, yeah. quoting yeah. somebody else. And there's no doubt that, that mm. actually in the Christian story, suffering is never wasted. It's actually redeemed. But that's not to say that, you know, we, we don't long for people to be able to be at rest. Mm. And I think discerning that is, is difficult. And, and Joe, I know it isn't really a, a, <clears throat> a clear answer. And then there aren't clear answers to these things. Our response should always be compassion. And be asking, like Mary says, your will be done, God. Um, and, and whatever that means then to people is that we are at heaven breaking into earth today um, and hell breaks through too at times. Uh, but, but heaven isn't the only thing for us as Christians because Jesus is with us here and now. Excellently silent. He See? nearly, he nearly, I was like, make him stop, Simon. You did, you almost, you almost did the full, very discreet flying rugby tackle. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him, I saw him coming. <laughs> it's, the, it's the old chapel thing, in it, of saved and satisfied, isn't it? The idea that being a Christian is hanging around waiting to die. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe and send us your questions. We love your questions. Yeah.